Thank you, Mr. President. 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 Thank you, Mr. There will be two ways to press I've been here about a week at tremendous impressions of the United States. It seems that one knows it all, but when one actually arrives, one understands how great a country it is just in a purely physical way. The most important thing about a country is its people, and that's hard to see from the Most political prisoners have now been freed in the Soviet Union, and this was to some uh, partly your doing as well. And there are only individual political prisoners left. However, one of them is Vasiv Mailanov, who uh, at the time that I was sent to Gorky protested against this and was imprisoned because of this. And I find it very ironic that here I am, even free to travel to the United States, and he is still in prison there. So I decided the first thing I would do when coming here would be to mention this fact. Mm -hmm. 
And there's another one, Mikhail Kukabaka, who has been in prison since 1970 because he uh, refused to bear false witness against the foreign diplomat. Mr. President, you're hearing all this. Do you feel that human rights then is still an irritant in U.S.-Soviet relations? Well, yes, of course, until it's, it's completely, until it's completely eliminated, uh, this type of political prisoner. And we have had great success, and the General Secretary has been more cooperative than any Soviet leader before him. And I assume that we have these names that have been mentioned here. Do you, do you feel that all the remaining political prisoners will be released, as some have said, uh, well, soon? Well, that statement has been made, and now we can only wait to see. Mr. President, is there a breakthrough on the TLO, so far as you're concerned, so far as accepting Israel? Well, I only know this thing that we apparently <coughs> that there has been an indication that they are willing to abide by 242. And, uh, hope it's true, because then that would mean some progress, although I think there are many problems yet to be solved. Thank you, Mr. Frank. We have to go. Thank you. I'm late for something. we got to go. Thanks, Mr. President. I'm not sure that's the answer. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. I'm still not sure that that is the answer. Thank you. 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 Form a society that will receive every year three magazines with all the material about the Constitution. This is the first edition, and this is for you. And this is going to go on, we hope, uh, perpetually, forever. We're forming a society. Thank you very much. And we're very much inspired by one bit of good news that came with some bad news. The election was good news, but there were only 50% of the people voted in this country. Yes, I know. And we think that your program here for this constitutional uh, program is a way to inspire enough interest in this country to get that voting level up before we lose some of our democracy. Well, uh, I think you're right. I've had some worries that maybe, what with our local elections and state elections and then congressional every two years, that maybe we're just overperforming for the public. Too many of them. Yeah, yeah. they can't no. rise to that kind of emotional thing that an election year calls for. Sure. And uh, I've wondered if maybe it oughtn't, we shouldn't be looking at the congressional thing for one thing and deciding whether there should be two or four years. Yes. But maybe Margaret, maybe Margaret Thatcher can come up with some ideas. Their <laughs> campaign lasted six weeks over there. Well, I'm very honored and pleased to have this. Can I tell you all a little? I know we're pressed for time here because I get so far behind, but 
Could I tell you an interesting little thing, or at least it was interesting to me about the Constitution? Yeah. Uh, we gave a, a dinner in the White House for the uh, Crown Prince and Princess of Japan. And she was there, my right, at our table, and the thing, and the conversation had uh, kind of begun around our table, and it was on such a thing as this. And I made the statement that I had read a lot of constitutions in other countries. And I said the difference, and I tell this to school kids, I said the difference is so simple and so little that it's overlooked, and yet it is so great, this tiny thing, three little words, that explains the whole difference between our constitution and the others. And I told them, I said, it's we the people. All those other constitutions are documents in which the government tells the people what they can do. Yeah. Ours, we the people, tell the government what it can do. And a quiet little voice behind me said, ours does too now. And I turned and looked, it was the crown princess. <laughs> and I said, what, what are you saying? She said, now our constitution is we the people. Since the war, they've evidently changed their constitution. And like ours, there is another constitution. No. <laughs> Roscoe Pound was head of the That's commission good news. Over there after <laughs> to uh, hold an act of the Congress of their diet on constitution. Yeah. Ours was in play. Until John Marshall. Okay. Great. All right, now everyone? Yeah, that'd be fine. Okay. <clears throat> Well, I thank you all for this. I'm very proud to have you. Buy him one number one. <laughs> I've had to fight with myself as to whether to let a million people you can see it in the presidential library or whether to We'll get you another one. Maybe we can manage to get you another one. I think we have one on one eight. We're also going to thank make you, you an honorary member of the society. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have one on one eight for you, Mr. President. We're now 10 minutes late for the next oh, week. Oh, we'll be on our way. Mr. President, <laughs> good to see you, well, sir. Listen, thank you, Walter. Very, very good of you to say good day. You've honored me greatly, and I'm Good to see you. I'm going to see your friend Gorbachev when he's here oh. in New York. I had a message already. Yeah. We want to talk about the trade yeah. program. Yes, yeah. yeah, so yeah. So this is Mayor Collick. Well, Mr. Mayor, Mr. President, you couldn't remember, but I had the honor of getting an honorary degree together with you at Notre Dame for 10 years ago. Yes, well, it is good to see you. Very good to have to you. Be. Very happy to be here. You, after these eight glorious years, you couldn't lose without getting the blessings of Jerusalem. <laughs> well, good thank you. Good Hi. Hi. Well, I just want to congratulate you on behalf of all Americans for all that you've done in your efforts with regard to the various communities in Jerusalem and, and yes. keeping open the, the various religious shrines as well as preserving the yes. historic sites and all. We did something about this, but we were always encouraged by the friendship of uh, the United States about all your regard for our country, our people, our city. I brought you a car, a map of uh, Jerusalem, which is very special for us. You know, we, every man must think that this city is uh, the center of the world, but I have a document. <laughs> <laughs> this is a map. Turn this around. This is a map uh, of uh, about 1560. My goodness. Six, seven centuries after Columbus. And here, here is a map. Well, uh, just, uh, <laughs> I had the other day the visit of, uh, for the thousand years of the Russian church, uh, of some Russian church dignitaries who uh, uh, came to Jerusalem, and they were very unhappy about the uh, Russia not being mentioned. Well, Armenia is mentioned, but this is a little embarrassing at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> but here is America. America is, is it? Yes. But at that time, it wasn't so important as it is today. No. Can we hold it up for the picture? Well. You can't really use it for navigation, <laughs> but you have navigated the free world so well. Well, well thank we all admire you. Well, thank you, and I'm very pleased and proud to have this. I mean, that's very, very kind of you. I, I 
shall treasure that. Well, you have so many things to treasure, but the most things you have to treasure are your great achievements and your great memories of eight. President Tom Evans. Hi, Mr. President. Hello there. How are you? Good, Good to time. see you. Thank Fine. You. Thank you. Good to be here. Minus Good minus to have you here. Mr. President. Minus right, Under well, Secretary of Education. Well, yes. Nice Good to, to see you. Today. Thank you, sir. Great. Hello, Mr. President. Hello there. Nice to see you again. I'm very to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, hey. what's your name? <laughs> Good to see you. How are you, sir? Good. Martha said to you, hello. Well, I'll give her our best. Thank you. Bill Taylor, Mr. President. Yes, hello. Good to see you. 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 Hello there. Good to see you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Mr. President. Say, so you really took Macomb County for the Vice right. President, I'll tell you. Thank you. Well, Good I really that. enjoyed it. That was great. Yeah, yeah. what marvelous. And they gave you what huge vote support. Good. Good. <laughs> I hope you'll do that dinner on Los Angeles. Uh, I, I won't be able to answer that for a while until we... No, but I like my stuff. Uh, <laughs> Mr. President, Buck Reinhardt, Mayor of Columbus. Yeah. Since that time, there's been a very significant growth, as you see, in partnerships in education. Uh, this year, a couple of events of interest have occurred. We're having our fifth national symposium. Compared to the 200 we had the first year, we've got over 1,000 people coming to this symposium from all over the country. We also, by the way, have 30 people from Britain. When you're having dinner with Margaret Thatcher this evening, uh, we'll be having dinner with 30 business leaders who have met in London uh, at our private sector are being over there who will be attending the National Symposium. And also this year, we have established the National Association of Partners in Education, combining with two million volunteers in the National School Volunteer Program to establish this new organization to further spread the word. In doing this, we're going to be using a report which the Department of Education has now prepared, and this survey shows it will be our starting point for if I may, a new beginning uh, <laughs> uh, to go forward from 140,000 partnerships we have now, and Under Secretary Wright has that report for you, sir. Well, Mr. President, on behalf of uh, Secretary Apostles and the Department of Education, we're proud to present you a report that you can be proud of for a long time, because that chart indicates there's been over a 350% increase in partnerships in education through the private sector initiative that you created leader of our great land. This report points out that American schools is everybody's business. And it says that that 140,000 partnerships touch the lives of over 9 million young people in our country. And we are proud of that. We want you to receive this report and be proud of your accomplishments. Well, I'm very proud of one of yours and your accomplishments. So this is just wonderful. I appreciate everything that you've done and are continuing to do. We congratulate you for creating this private sector initiative in 1983 and all the good that you've done for our country in areas outside of education, but all facets of life. Well, thank you. And you were remarkable about the 30 British ones. <laughs> 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 Back quite early in our visit, it has spread. Now, two years ago, we asked to send some 
people like yourselves over to Paris because you wanted to find out how we did it. And uh, more recently, there's been a similar meeting in London. <laughs> and, uh, and the hosts were the Italian Private Sector Initiative uh, group and, uh, with all their plans. One of their first plans was an American park in right. Venice. <laughs> <laughs> Susan wants to, you're right here in front of the desk, and I think maybe if they split apart a little bit, then we'll be fine. I think we'll start around the next one. Spread out a little so you won't be covered. What do you need, Susan? You okay? Yeah. 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 picture of them together, and everybody's kind of angling toward the middle of the group, all except Frederick March, a great star. He'd make his way right over there to the end of the line. Being a beginner in the business, I asked him, I said, why do you do that? You're a big star. And he said, no one reads the entire caption, but they all begin reading. Oh. <laughs> meeting of the Advisory Committee for the Presidential Libraries. I thank you, Don Wilson, for creating this important group who advised the government on issues of interest to Presidential Libraries. As you've just heard, plans will, are well underway for my Presidential Library, and I'm looking forward officially to breaking ground to, on this coming Monday. Great joy, I say, in California. <laughs> <laughs> I know that some of you in this room have been of assistance in the planning of that library, and I'd like to thank you all for all that you have been doing. Um, well, thank you, Mr. President. We, we're certainly honored that you took a few minutes to come join us. And uh, this is a very dedicated group. Uh, all of them have been had long involvement, and I think that Many of them have worked directly with Brad and the Foundation in terms of giving advice on, on your library, and, and I think that it's a very important mechanism that we can continue to use and uh, involve all the libraries together and build a strong, strong base. So, again, thank you so much for taking the time to come and talk to us. Well, I know some people may think that, that you think of these as kind of a, a monument or something, but I don't, I don't feel that way. I think it's a part of the history makes possible a preservation of the history at a sort of a different level uh, in a personal way that way. And so there is some real merit in having it. I think that's the important part. It's why they're part of the National Archives in terms of maintaining that, uh, that very important aspect of history. And that's what we intend to do, make them living. Through the public-private cooperation, we can make them extremely uh, viable Thank you. 